Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So here I am back in my B6 Galen leather notebook with Tomoe River paper. And I'm just gonna do a progress report for you. So I'm gonna show you my thoughts on all of these currently inked pen and ink pairings for August. But then I'm also going to do my, I guess, update on pens that I've acquired, pens that I've sold, inks that I've given away or finished or sold, and inks that I've acquired for the month of August. So let's get started. The first pen that I used for the month of August was this Zodiac Pen Co. in the Virgo model, and it's the Primary Manipulation by Jonathan Brooks of Carolina Pen Company, and it currently has a fine cursive smooth italic nib. So this was actually the nib that came on the uh, water lily koi and because it's a yovo nib it's easy to switch these in and out so this is inked with dominant industry maple and i absolutely love this ink i had a very small sample from miss marilyn darling and i'm very tempted to either buy another four mil sample or to just buy a bottle I really shouldn't be buying bottles, but I do want to buy this bottle. But the combination, so the ink itself, I'm giving a 10 because I really love the shading of this ink. It's this beautiful reddish orange, but it's not so garish. It's a really, really lovely reddish orange. And then the flow, the flow with the ink and the nib, it's actually, I'm going to give the flow about a nine because it's just the perfect amount of flow for me, especially with that, oh, I'm sorry, fine architect nib the fine architect nib you get that line variation but i also get the right amount of ink coming out of the nib so i gave the flow a nine and then the comfort level of this pen i'm also giving a nine the virgo model just fits so so nicely in my hand and i'm so happy with this pen and ink combination for the month of august the next pen is from just turnings which and it's also the Blank is from Carolina Pen Company or Jonathan Brooks and it is the Pastel Primary Manipulation and I just love the way this swirls. This is my ideal or perfect Pastel Primary Manipulation pen and the nib that is on it is a Yovo number no. 6 extra fine nib and the ink in it is Dominant Industry Barley. I'm going to give the ink a 9 because I think it's a really beautiful yellow and then I'm going to give the flow a 9 as well. I find it it's just it's a great flowing ink and then the comfort level of this pen I will also give a 9. It's just it's beautiful in the hand like if you just let's zoom out here but I mean if you look at it and how it feels in the hand it's absolutely lovely. So 9 across the board. I love the yellow of this and it dries darker so more golden and it is very and it is very legible but it is legible it is legible lovely ink flow with an extra fine nib And for comfort level, the pen, whoops, fits nicely, don't move, fits nicely in the hand. Can write two to three pages with this for sure. with this perfect so that is my just turnings in the pastel primary manipulation the next pen that i have inked up is my just turnings custom so the blank is a custom that i had done by tim of turned pen co turned pen co and it is called swirly joyful kismet after my initials backwards and then i had um steven of just turnings actually make uh <laughs> interchangeable gosh i couldn't think of the word interchangeable finials and then adding the clip here and then this 
currently has a fine cursive smooth italic nib and this is the nib that is from the Water Lily Koi that was done by Jack Hernandez. And the ink in here is Autumn Forest by Dominant Industry. Such a beautiful ink. So I'm rating this ink a 10 because it's just a beautiful like olive green with that rose gold shimmer as you can see here. The flow I'm also giving a 10 and then the comfort level. It's the same pen as the uh, one with the pastel primer manipulation so I'm also giving that a 9. I use this pen and ink in my a6 five-year journal love the shimmer and green olive color flow is just the way I like it And the nib is smooth yet slicey, which is just what I like in a fine cursive smooth italic. Can write two to three pages comfortably with this. Oh, I love a good cursive smooth italic. Love this. One of the things though with this ink is that you do kind of have to like, agitate it a little bit just to make sure that you get the shimmer there. But one of the things that is great, and I'm gonna write this down, is that shimmer did not clog feed. Which some shimmers can do. Loved that combination, really beautiful, but also it's my custom pen, I love it. So that is my Just Turnings uh, Turn Pen Co. Pen with Dominant Industry Autumn Forest. One thing I'm gonna say before I say this pen is that I normally show writing samples of this, but with how busy this month is, I've been able to show some journaling and some, you know, I've been able to do journaling with all of these pens, but I haven't been able to do my transcribing. It's just been a crazy month and I haven't been able to. So I don't have as many writing samples to show you, but uh, I'm hoping this will be helpful otherwise. So the next pen is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the Christmas Pudding, and this has a 14K medium nib. So not a medium fine, but a medium nib. And I actually prefer this size in the Sailor. So the ink that is in here is Robert Oster, Sydney, Darling Harbor, and I'm going to give the ink actually a 10 because I can't fault the ink at all. I think the ink is really beautiful. It's like got this beautiful, um, like the shading is lovely. It's a really nice green color and it's just, it's, it shows up beautifully and matches really, really well with this pen. The flow is also a 10. Comfort level, because it is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim, I'm gonna give the comfort level of this a seven because Sailor Pro Gear Slims are just that bit too small for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna sell this pen though because it's just so beautiful. So I really enjoyed the color and shading of this ink. Shading of this ink. Want, but don't need a bottle. <laughs> Try to stay away from buying too many bottles of inks. The flow is perfect with the smooth medium nib. And the Sailor, the Pro Gear Slim model is just that bit too small. So can only write one page. Comfortably. 
even just doing this my hand is hurting a little bit but i know some people have said that i have a death grip that i'm holding it really tightly and actually i'm not no it's about i guess a medium and it looks like i'm holding it really tightly just by my hand position but with my hand i i just prefer slightly girthier pens to write comfortably and I would rather adjust the type of pen that I'm using versus adjusting my grip because my grip is something that I've been using for over 30 years and that for me isn't as easy to change versus if I just find a pen that is a slightly wider and you know I'll have a much more enjoyable writing experience. So that is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Christmas pudding with uh wait Robert Oster, <laughs> Sydney Darling Harbor. The next pen is another Zodiac Pen Co. And this one is also in the Virgo model. And it is with another Jonathan Brooks blank. It is the Abalone. And I just cannot get over how beautiful this is. I could just keep looking at it. And it's, it's absolutely stunning. And I'm just realizing I have one, two, three, four pens in here with Jonathan Brooks uh, resins. You think I like them a little bit? Yeah, but absolutely gorgeous. And this has an extra fine Yovo nib. So this is inked with Diamine Celadon Cat, which was one of the new Reddit inks that were released in the last couple of months. And in terms of the ink, 10. I am realizing I've given three inks here a 10 out of 10, but I love it. The flow, I would give that a 10 as well. And then comfort, I would also give this a nine. Like I just, gosh, I cannot stop looking at that pen. So the ink, ink is currently my favorite shade of blue. That grayish blue that is so for me, complex. I mean, just look at that. Like, how beautiful is that? The ink flows really well out of an extra fine. Which is smooth. Get crisp, meaning that it's still got a very nice fine line. Comfort level can write two to three pages with this easily. Really love this pen, and I'm excited for the other pen models that Bart is going to come out with that are in different shapes. One of the things about Zodiac Pen Company is that he does use the same section for all of his pen models. So what's going to be different is the cap, but also the pen body. And if you like a thicker pen body, then there are other models that will accommodate that, but then you will still have the same grip section. So beautiful. Love this pen and ink combination. So once again, that is the Zodiac Pen Co. in the Virgo model with abalone <laughs> with Diamine Celadon Cat. This next pen was gifted to me by, by Bless Get Canada and this was also an unexpected, um, I, I really like this one. I wasn't sure how I would feel about the Lamy 2000 because it was one of those pens that I just felt like, you know, you had to try it, but it, it doesn't look anything like my other pens, but this actually feels really good in the hand. You can tell there is some staining there. I'm gonna be able to clean that up, but it fits, it fits really well in the hand, even posted. I don't mind those metal things that hold the cap down. It's actually, I hold it about here and it's still very, very comfortable. It has an extra fine 14 karat gold nib. The ink in here is Private Reserve Tanzanite. And the comments that I've heard from some people is that this ink is very wet and that the next time that I ink the Lamy 2000 up, try it with a slightly drier ink. Or um, when I ink it up, make sure that I let a couple of drops of ink out to prevent that nib creep that's happening there. But I think also when I flew to San Francisco, there was some ink that kind of leaked and that's all also in the cap but it's easy to clean for me so the ink in here is 
Private Reserve Tanzanite, and I'm going to give the ink a 9. It's not one that I normally go for, but it is actually, you know what, I'm going to give it an 8. The reason is, and I will say it shortly, Flow is a 9, and Comfort Level is a 9. I really like the way that this fits in my hand. So the ink is not a color that I normally go for. But it is pretty. Flow. Flow is a nine. It's a very wet ink. But even days after writing, I was able to smudge it in my weeks. So that is a little troublesome, which is why I gave the, the ink, and actually I'm going to give the, well, I can still smudge it, um, but I love the smooth, extra fine nib, which almost looks like an architect nib just by the line variation. And that's a very comfortable writer. I really enjoyed using this pen. I know there's some things that I still have to kind of work out the kinks in, but I did really enjoy writing with this and I'm looking forward to inking this up in the future with some other inks. So that is the Lamy 2000 with Private Reserve Tanzanite. The next pen is my F3 pens in the Moonlit Rodden and this was returned for me by Carl of F3 pens. If you remember this was a chonker of a pen and then he turned it so that the body is the same size as the section and it just is much more comfortable now and then I actually had this nib tuned and smoothed at the San Francisco pen show by Kirk of Pen Realm. I think something may have happened to the nib in transit so it was a little it, it felt like maybe the it was misaligned but it just wasn't writing like I liked it so it's currently inked with Birmingham Pen Co. Milkweed. I'm giving the ink a nine because it is fantastic. The flow is a 10, just where I like it. And comfort level is also a nine. So why am I giving it a nine again? No, I'm giving it a 10 because I love it. Love the color and shading of this pen, uh, ink. <laughs> It's a beautiful mauve. Really, really pretty. Beautiful mauve, purple. Perfect flow. With the fine nib. Now tuned and smoothed. Fine nib. Now, very comfortable that it's been tuned or returned. By Carl. I was, oh, there's a hard start there. Yeah, so it is a little, it is a bit smoother. Oh, a little bit of a hard start there. What's going on? Yeah, definitely smoother than what it was before I left for San Francisco. And I'm so glad I got this tuned and smoothed. So that is my F3 pens in the Moonlit Rodden with Birmingham Pen Co. Milkweed. Last but certainly not least is my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in Angel Skin. And when I was at the San Francisco Pen Show, I met Clarissa of the Snowy Studio and she let me try out different nibs and different sizes. So she let me try out the Memento Zero, which is the smaller version of this. And I think I have a Memento Zero 
on my list for the future to purchase. I just have to find the right body. But the more that I write with this, the more I realize that yes, well, it is just a little bit too big. I love it so much. I love the pen. I love the nib. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of this. It's just love with this one. So this is inked with uh, Colorverse Alpha Sagittarius, and I'm gonna actually give the ink a nine, and then the flow is a 10, and the comfort level is a nine as well. Actually, you know what, all across the board, except for the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, all of these are nines. So the ink is a beautiful brown, bl brown black, brown pink, brownie pink, but can be too light sometimes. Like in just where I wrote that S, you can see how light that is. It can be light sometimes. Flow with the 14K fine nib is my preferred Flow. So this Colorverse ink is actually not too dry and, and paired with this nib. It's just gorgeous. Really perfect combination. And then Comfort pen is a, a tad too big, but can write about two pages with this comfortably. Perfect. All right, so that is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0 with the Colorverse Alpha Sagittarius. So there are all of the pens and inks that I had inked up for August. What are your thoughts on these combinations? Now, when it comes to the grading system, I feel like I'm not as strict when it comes to some of them because I've, I'm the type of person where if I am not enjoying a pen and ink, I'm not going to want to reach for it. And when it came to these combinations, I think the one that I loved reaching for the most was probably the Just Turnings and Turn Pen Co. with the Dominant Industry Autumn Forest. But I also really loved using Dominant Industry Maple and um, even the Lamy 2000. All of these I actually really did enjoy using, which is why the rating for these is as high as they are. There wasn't any in these that I really, really disliked. Probably the most uncomfortable one was the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, but the ink itself and the nib on that pen are just gorgeous. So there were some pros and cons with each of these, but overall, I really enjoyed what I had inked up for the month of August. And then now what I'm going to do is actually do the progress report for August so that I can show you what I've acquired, what I've finished, what I've sold. Let's get started. All right, so with the August update, I keep track of what I've purchased, what I've given away, what I've been gifted and things like that. And this helps me to really inventory everything, but also to be more aware of my overall spending habits. So the first one that we're going to look at is pens. Wow, that was not neatly written. Goodness. So with pens, there were two pens purchased. And that was from the San Francisco Pen Show. And they were the Atelier Lousseau, Lousseau, and the Heinz Pen. And it just makes such a difference when you can talk to the people who've actually made the pen. So I've also, let's see, there were four pens received, which means that there were pens that were probably gifted or ordered in a different month, but because of how long it took to get to me, they were only received this month. And those pens were the Navalor or Narwhal Tromso, which... If you watch that video, it just took forever and a day to get here. Then the Lamy 2000, the Atelier Lousseau, and the Heinz pen. And then I also sold one pen, which was my Platinum 3776. And there will probably be 
one or two more pens sold for the month of September after I do 30 inks 30 days. So keep an eye out for that. The next one is inks. So with inks, try to be good actually. There were zero bottles purchased. As tempting as it was, there were zero bottles purchased. There were zero ink samples purchased, which is very good for me. But one of the main reasons why I didn't purchase anything because I was gifted 21 samples. Now of these 21, six of them are duplicates of ones I already have. So really 15 of these are new that I've never tried before. So thank you to Pam, uh, of old lady with a camera who gifted these to me at the San Francisco Pen Show along with the stickers and the chocolate. Just uh, thank you. Um, and then in terms of ink samples used or given away, there were two samples used or given away. And that was Dominant Industry Maple. I am really tempted to buy a bottle of that, especially for fall. And uh, Ferris Wheel Press Grape Ice Pop. I gave that to my friend Adrian, who loves purple. So then for the I guess, conclusion of where I am with my collection for the month of August. So for the totals, so for total pens, I am at 33 pens, 33 pens. There were, so basically, hold on, let's go back to the July, so I had 30. There were two on the way. So I went up three? No, that doesn't make sense. How did I have? Oh, because I received four. Yeah, so I went up three. Up three because there were four received, one sold. So these are actually pens I have in hand. Then inks, ink bottles. Oh, hold on. Did not write that properly. So ink bottles, still 39, no change because I did not buy or receive any new bottles. And then ink samples, I am sitting at, I'm currently sitting at 83. <laughs> yeah, 83 because there were 21 gifted, oh, did I count in my last one for ink samples used? I didn't count in my last one the ones that were given to me by Blisket Canada. So there were a few, five that were gifted to me by Blisket. So plus five by Blisket. So I have gone up in terms of ink samples from, let's see, where's my July progress report? I had 49, so I was down to, there was 10 on the way. So 49, oh my gosh, to, what is that, 34? Wow, up 34, that doesn't, yeah, up 34. Because there were 10 on the way, plus these, and then yeah, so the math adds up, gosh. All right, so that is my August progress update. So just an update on this, and I've already smudged it. I've actually sold two pens as of this morning. So that was the Pilot E95S, and then earlier this month I had sold the Platinum 3776. So actually, two pens in with two pens out. And then my total number of pens, this will be two sold, and this will only be up the two. So then I will have a total of, and actually I'm writing 
every time I write over <laughs> this, that private reserve ink just smudges, as you can see from what I did up there. So total pens currently is 32. So there is my progress report for the month of August. I really like keeping track of how many pens I purchased, how many pens I received, and how many pens I've sold. It really helps me keep track of what I'm buying, what I'm selling, and it also makes me more aware of what my tastes are because I know those tastes change. Now, I am okay with letting go of pens. I know that there are some people who have a pen. Once a pen enters their collection, it is never leaving. For me personally, I am a user, I mean, as well as a collector, but I want to make sure that the pens that I actually have in my collection are ones that I enjoy using. And then when I don't use them anymore, no longer enjoy them, then I sell them on. And these ones I was happy to sell on. And then with my inks and then my totals for the month. Do you guys do anything like this as well as keeping track of your currently inked and that progress? Let me know down in the comments below and what your purpose is for doing something like this or something similar. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.